What's up, people? Orsa Course here, coming at you with another Paragon deck build. Today, we're going to be looking at the new hero again, Revenant. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people talk about different deck builds that you can go for him. Uh, my main deck build is all power, uh, ability pin, and 10% life still. But I tried out some other deck builds, so let's go ahead and go through them here. The first one we're going to go over is the crit build that I made with him, and then I'm going to put up one that did the haste, and I'll give my opinion on which ones I think is the best, or which one I think is the best. So for this crit deck, I go ahead and I start with the Arch Mangus. I like the Arch Mangus because it gives you that 30 power. I think that's more viable than the attack, sp <coughs> the attack speed, so I'll go ahead and go with the 30 power. Now the consumables, very simple, health potion, scout ward, strike token, so easy peasy there. Now once we get to the actual equipment, um, as always when I have fury heroes, I go with the mad stones gems to start out. Um, that's because they give you that 12 power, that's a nice boost to power early on, can really help you get ahead, help you with your last hits, hit, help you with your ganks, whatever the case may be, power early game is king. So I go with three Mad Stones gems early on and I equip them all the same with three minor strikes. So nice little boost there. Now as we get to the deck proper, um, we're gonna go in order of how I build. Now depending on the enemy team, sometimes I might build a ward, uh, a ward fairly early, but if you don't need your ward super early, maybe keep the scouts ward for a little bit. But this is optional. But this one, if you feel you need it early, go ahead and build it. Uh, you don't have to upgrade it until you're ready for it. Uh, this is an Assassin's Ward, 6 power, 4 basic pin, 2.5 life steal. Most importantly though, place the Shadow Wards. Uh, now this card right here, it's good for end game because it gives you, with my, uh, I equipped it with 3 lesser drains. And it gives you 10% life steal. Uh, with the crit debt, you're, hitting, you're critting for about 568 on minions and about 460-ish on um, actual heroes. So you're getting some pretty decent life steal back. Um, so I like that card there. 10% seems to be enough to get it done. Now, as we get into the deck proper, um, the card that I actually like to build first is the Blink Shot. Now, if you want, you can build whatever you like, but I just like to build the Blink Shot fairly early after I get my Mad Stones in. Uh, this card gives you 6 power, and I like the unique active. So teleport for passive cooldown or reset on player kill within eight seconds after using blink shot. So I like this card because you can use it to engage and you can use it to disengage. You can use it to close the gap. You can use it to create a gap. This is very good to have on a carry because if you do get caught out, this card can really help you survive. So I like having the blink shot in this deck. Uh, on top of that, if you use his uh, his ultimate right, he places you in the shadow realm and then uh, or the nether realm. And then on top of that, once you get out, you can use your blink shot if you still need to create some distance. So it's a very good card paired with Revenant, I'm uh, noticing. Any carry, really, who can use a, a blink charm or a blink shot, it's a good addition, really. I equip this with um, a strike and two major ca or minor casts. So give me a nice little boost of power there. And more importantly, it gives you the escape. Now, as we get to the deck proper, I have three um, Spirit of the Rift Hunters, and two of them are exactly the same. So, Spirit of the Rift Hunter is six power, four percent crit, eight percent crit once you fully upgrade it. And I go ahead and I equipped it with two major casts and then a major wound, giving me twenty-four uh, crit right there and a nice boost of power. The second one right here, I build exactly the same to a uh, major cast and a major wound, putting me at 48% crit. Then my last spirit of Rift Hunter, I go all power, um, putting me at about 204 power, 60% crit. So right there, six out of every 10 hits ideally are going to be crits. You're critting for about 568. Now the last card that I build is Blade of the Agora. Now I like this card because it gives you the 100% crit bonus. This is what gets you to hitting for the 400, 500 um, because it doubles your crit damage. Uh, I equip this card with uh, all minor casts and then it comes with six power on its own. So this is the build that I'm running with Revenant right now. Now let's go ahead and take a look at his moveset real quick and talk about that. 
So Revenant move set goes as follows. So he has the hand cannon, range basic attack dealing 50 basic damage. Revenant's hand cannon only holds four bullets. After the fourth bullet is fired, Revenant automatically reloads his hand cannon. Bonus attack speed decreases reload speed, but doesn't affect fire rate. So he's always gonna fire at the same rate, but you can get his reload speed drastically reduced. Um, when I do my uh, haste deck, I will show you what that looks like too, because you can get it down pretty far. Now, um, as we go down to the next one here, this is Hellfire Round. So passive, uh, Revenant's last round in the chamber deals bonus, or 25 bonus ability damage. Active, Revenant's reload four bullets into his hand cannon. So right there, basically, your last bullet deals extra damage, and on top of that, you can reload whenever you want. So this is good, just in case you need to, uh, like you're about to engage in a fight, you might not wanna go in there with two shots in the chamber. You might wanna go ahead and reload so you get your four shots. So that's good right there. Also, if you're gonna use the Stinger Boost, I believe that this, uh, since this is technically an ability, it'll go ahead and activate a uh, Stinger Boost. So if you wanna do that combo, uh, go for it. I'm not sure how viable it is. I don't know if Stinger Boost is worth it, but it might be something to experiment with. As we get down here, we got Obliterate. So Revenant unleashes 10 Ethereal Missiles that home to random targets with a wide cone dealing a total of 120 ability damage. Now, I like this move right here. It doesn't uh, benefit from your crit, but it is a, a heavy hitting attack. So you can uh, hit somebody with two shots and Obliterate and they'll probably be done with the crit deck. Uh, especially because you're critting for, like I say, 400 on most heroes, 460-ish. So two hits plus Obliterate, they're done. The next move we have here is Scar. Scar the target enemy for five seconds. The next three, four, five, six instances of damage from Revenant's trigger bonus ability damage. So this uh, this uh, move is very good to combine with your Obliterate. It also works for the final shot in your uh, hand cannon, but it's definitely good for Obliterate because you throw the Scar, you hit him with the Obliterate and it does tons of damage. So very good combo there. Uh, definitely two shots from the hand cannon, the Scar Obliterate combo. It's a wrap. The last move here is Reckoning. So Revenant pulls himself and his target into the nether realm for six, seven, eight seconds, dealing 20 ability damage. Killing his opponent inside the nether realm grants 600, 800, 1,000 uh, card points. So, or CXP. So right there, that's all good. If you isolate your target in the nether realm and you 1v1 them, you get additional card points, which will allow you to snowball, which will allow you to get ahead of those other carries. Um, so this is a very good move. I like this because you can use it to engage and you can use it to escape or to help your uh, teammates escape. Because if somebody uh, latches onto your teammate, you can do you can hit them with Reckoning and it'll just take you and that person into the nether realm, giving your teammate a chance to escape. So I like it for that reason. But also, it allows you to take a crucial person out of the fight. Now, you might sacrifice yourself in doing so. So, you know, that, that happens from time to time. But if you choose the engagement right, you can take an important person out of the fight and then 1v1 them, take them out. So I like this move because it can be used in a lot of different ways, really. So people, that's what I have for Revenant right now. Uh, the crit build seems to be okay. I still, think, um, I still think power overall is a little bit better, but I can see why crit would be viable. The only thing is you have to be able to hit your shot just like any other carry. If you're not hitting your shots, I definitely recommend going power over a crit um, because the obliterate scar combo is devastating and your hand cannon is still gonna be hitting for 250 plus without the crit. So you can still do a ton of damage with your autos. So that's just my opinion. Like I said, like I said, crit is viable. <clears throat> I can see, I see a lot of people building and they do well with it. So it just depends on your preference. As always, people, this is Orson of Course. If you like this video, make sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. 
and make sure to share the video out. Maybe somebody else will see the deck build and it'll help them make a decision on how they want to build their revenue. As always, people, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.